Right, morning all. That's how teachers start, so um, I guess I'll enjoy the teaching side of this particular session. So I'm based at Mount Aspiring College in Wanaka. Um, if we can bring the slide to go to the next one. And it's not clicking. Do I have to all right, so UFB at Mac. Yes, we are Mac. We are Mount Aspiring College. We have a great time with fibre now. Um, we are a school of, this is pretty slow to respond. Okay, we're a school of 700 students. We're year uh, 7 through to 13. Uh, we've got students from all over the world and all over New Zealand. We have our own hostel with 30 kids in it. We've got about 30 internationals. Um, we're primary school and secondary, so we've got pretty well the whole lot. Uh, that is, of course, on a day when they can get there, because not every day is a school day for us. And in fact, on some days, like this day, the weather gets so bad that we don't do very much at all in terms of internet. Um, that's a real photo that was taken on the 10th of September this year. That's Wanaka in the background. When we get those sorts of conditions, we don't have DSL anymore. It just stops. Um, my wife will ring me from home and say, is the internet going? And I'll say, no, it's not going. And there's a reason for it. And so until the chorus technicians get out and fix it, nothing goes anymore. We're highly charged static electricity. If you walk around the place, you'll get electric shocks off just about everything. Make sure you ground yourself before you get out of the car. Cell phones in people's pockets have been known to stop working just because they get so much charge in them. And I believe that drove some people from telecom nuts. Um, we're also New Zealand's most remote secondary school. Anyone like to have a guess at where our nearest beach is? It's Haast. Okay? That's how far away we are from absolutely everywhere. So Haast is our nearest beach. Of course, New Zealand goes to the beach. We don't. We have to take virtual field trips to just about everywhere. Um, it's the only way we can do it. It's three hours drive to Dunedin. It's two hours drive to Haast. So uh, video conferencing figures really, really highly in terms of what we have to do. Um, we had a year 10 science teacher went down to Antarctica. She was out there leading the science expeditions. So we brought in her back from Scott Base. We monopolised their entire connection out of Scott Base for an hour and we had her reporting back to the kids. It was just great. We use video conferencing for staff meetings, for meetings, for professional development. We've got two VC units. We just use them and use them and use them. Right, our internet, it didn't used to be terribly good. We used to have dual one megabit synchronous DSL connections. That was what we had. That had to support everything that we did, our video conferencing, our web mail, um, the whole lot, publishing data. It just wasn't enough. It's fair to say that for us, life was not in the fast lane, and the limits that we had to endure were endless. We had what I call the data trickle, so that's the Cadrona River at Mount Barker, and uh, it's only doing one and a half cumex there, so not very much data was flowing down our pipes. By the start of this year, we'd added a couple of uh, extra ADSL connections to the whole system. Um, each one could support 12 and a half megabits, once we got ADSL 2 into town, of course. Um, so we could now start to explore all of those things. But the cost of those services to us was huge. By the time we paid for our synchronous DSL connections that we needed to support video conferencing, by the time we paid for all the other circuits, our data costs were in excess of $1,200 a month. Now, for a school, that's not really sustainable. We've got to find better ways forward. We also had a 400 gig data cap across the two DSL lines. Um, our SDSL lines didn't have a data cap on them, which is just as well. We've got a ruckus Wi-Fi network. We've got over 500 devices connected to that. Students bring along whatever they want. Some students have got three or four devices. But we can at least start to use services in the cloud like ETV, more about that later, and we can start looking at some of the other solutions that were out there for us. We needed more. There was just no doubt about it. Um, the, the whole UFB RBI program that's out there and in going into schools, um, that's going to lead to Network for Learning. We have to move to that. If we don't move to that, then the cost of us to get fibre services into Wanaka was going to be in excess of $4,000 a month just to get the backhaul to Dunedin where we could then start to do some collective things that made it cheaper. So we knew that the whole RBI rollout was going to happen. We knew what the time frame was going to be. It was going to be June of this year. So our planning started. We wanted RBI as soon as we could possibly get it. 
Our needs overall, no data cap. Schools are massive consumers of data. Now, it's, it's okay to have a data cap when you're at home, when you're a family and you can, you know, maybe you can survive on 50 gig or 200 gig a month. I mean, I think my family probably goes through 200 gig. But when you're a school of 700, it's just totally unrealistic. Um, we needed fast access speeds. We needed a fixed affordable monthly price. We have to have things like static IP addressing so that we can run all of our servers. We have to have web filtering and firewalls that we can control. We have to integrate with our Active Directory. We basically have to have a pathway to the future so that anything that we do, we can carry on with in the future. We've just got to be able to expand and grow. So that data trickle that we had, well, that had to turn into effectively a data flood. And that's the Clutha River at Clyde as the dam goes up and down. And we've got 600 megabits of data going through, or 600 QMEX. So those are the sorts of amounts of data that we needed. We had to go and get ourselves a supplier. Um, Chorus, they were the uh, LFC company responsible for supplying service in our area. On their website, they tell us who can supply service. It was down to one of uh, three companies only. I contacted all of them. Let's work out who can give us the best deal. But it's not just about the deal, it's about what they know. You've actually got to understand the services of the organisation you know, that you're selling to. And, and without that, there was no point going forward. I was stunned at the lack of knowledge that some of the providers listed that could supply to us actually knew about N4L, about what schools needed. So in the end, we settled on telecom as providing that uh, particular service to us. The education plus plan was what we wanted. It was 240, well it is, it's $249 a month much as we want. That was just a stunning product for us. It saved our bacon, literally. No installation cost, smooth transition to network for learning. We get all the IP addressing that we need, and since then, of course, Telecom and GNI, they are going to supply network for learning services at no cost to a school um, that gets paid for by otherwise. So we're looking towards that and going to enjoy it. What we didn't get, well, we didn't get a firewall, we didn't get any filtering. We need that. You know, we can't allow kids just to go out on the internet and do whatever they like because believe me, they will do whatever they want if they get that opportunity. They're quite good at that. So we had to be creative about what it is that we came up with to make those sorts of systems work. We didn't want to spend money because Network for Learning is going to do that for us. I've watched schools go out and spend $20,000 buying a sonic wall, firewall to do all of this sort of thing. Why do that when there's other cheaper options around? So what we went for um, was running a, a product called PFSense because we had that particular box sitting around. Virtualization was mentioned earlier. Well, we virtualized all our servers. So one of our old servers was sitting there. So we just used that to run this product called PFSense. And if you don't happen to have one of those, well, there's a certain website around that will, in fact, go away and sell those to you quite cheaply. If, so um, you can go there and you can, between $500 and $1,000, go and buy a box that will do the job and run it. Now, I mentioned this thing called PFSense, and people often say to me, PF what? Well, it's a completely free, it's open source, it's a customised distribution of a Linux or Unix-based operating system called FreeBSD. It's specifically tailored to be a firewall, and it can do filtering. So it could do everything that we wanted to do it. Some of you might have also heard of FreeBSD because it's the foundation of what Apple use. So it has a really good web interface. We can use it. Um, people with limited knowledge have been able to use it. I've watched schools all over central Otago get stuck in and use PFSense to do whatever it is that they need to do. Um, it's got lots of advantages. It's got a, an XML formatted configuration file, so it's easy to set up. You don't have to be a network whiz to set it up. Someone who knows about those sorts of things can com compile the XML file, send it in an email to someone, and then they can put it together and upload it into the server, and then there's their firewall and filtering done. It's got an outbound firewall. We have to stop illicit use. We don't want kids going and breaching copyright. It can do all our inbound netting for us so that we can make our servers accessible um, to the parent community. It does all our video conferencing. It can do all our filtering. It can run blacklists and whitelists of sites that we want access to. And it can let 
us log or analyze the log. So if we've got any issues about it, what anyone was up to, we can go and use things like Sarge or uh, Light Squid and go and have a look at the, the, the files and see what was going on. So it's been pretty good for us. It does have some disadvantages, nothing is perfect. Um, it is a proxy-based system, so people have got to go and enter in things. We could do other bits and pieces. It didn't have single sign-on, but it was good enough because we could live with that, knowing that Network for Learning was going to come along and deliver to us what we needed. Around central Otago, lots of schools are picking this up. In fact, around Otago, around New Zealand, lots of schools are picking it up. So those are just the names of some of them who are doing it. Not all of them are using PFSense. I don't think Clyde School is, but I'm pretty sure the rest of them are doing it with PFSense. So it's been a very, very successful thing in that regard. So we're now into the UFB data flood. It's much better for us when someone else will run the services for us. We don't have to do it. We used to run an exchange server. Now we don't. Now we use Google Apps and we've got our email in the cloud. Much, much easier. We've got services like ETV, Meraki, um, an ed student management system that we want to move to. So things like Google Apps, uh, totally brilliant for us. Google Drive. All our storage in the cloud, 30 gig for absolutely everybody. Um, shared brainstorming at a staff meeting. So all of us can sit there and con um, we can <coughs> contribute to the same document. I've watched kids do things like <coughs> um, shared uh, collaboration on a debating speech. Uh, it just keeps on going and going and going. There's so much that we can do with it. We've also got Google Video. Video is particularly useful to us. Now, because we've got kids from absolutely everywhere, they need to keep in contact with their parents, their friends. Now, this is a social world that they live in. Um, this is all mountain biking up in Sticky Forest, which is one of my favourite mountain biking spots. But to actually make this sort of video up and get it out there and onto the web, that requires a huge amount of upload bandwidth. Now, you don't get that off normal connections. You've got to have a connection which has got the fibre services on it so that we can go off and do it. The kids have a great time doing this sort of thing, but it's not just getting out there and being social. We have to use this sort of thing so that we can do, say, moderation of um, English speeches. We've got to prove that the kids actually did what, we, what they say they, um, that they did. So we have to video their speeches, upload them, and then have other people go away and review them. Um, yeah, they get pretty carried away. The last thing any of our kids ever want to do is be on High Country Rescue. They don't want to be a part of that TV program. So we'll move to the next slide. Um, ETV, another brilliant resource for us. We've got all of those TV channels and we can go for the last two weeks and get any recorded program off any of those. All we have to do is pay our screen rights membership so that we're not infringing copyright. We can get that stuff. And then anything that they have gone and recorded, so there's you know, 20,000 programs that we can go and get. We don't need to worry about recording our own stuff anymore and putting it into a computer format. Download it straight from ETV. It's marvellous. <coughs> we make use of Meraki, that's a Cisco-based product. That lets us do our network management remotely, or in the cloud. Um, one of the great things that we can do with Meraki is turn off a room of computers at the end of the day. That saves us a huge amount of electricity. Um, but we can also do things like actually monitor um, what our individual servers are doing. So there's a quick graphic of that. We want to move our student management system into the cloud. <coughs> so we've got uh, student portals. So student, uh, both parents, teachers, kids, they can get back online, that's my own son there, um, and see what their progress is during the year, what credits they've got, and you know, whether it's looking, well, at the top it's a bit hard to read, but they can look at their timetables from home. Parents can look at attendance, attendance in real time, did my kid actually make it to school this morning? It's all there. Uh, pretty useful stuff. Now, of course, to do that again, we've got to have the bandwidth to support people actually sucking that data up from the school. We can take the whole student management system and put that in the cloud too. There's actually no reason for us to keep that at school anymore. And again, that's less effort for us. Um, <clears throat> next one. Success. Is it making a difference? Well, we like to think it's making a difference. The government have got a target of 85% uh, of all Level 2 students uh, should get NCEA Level 2 by the time they leave school. Well, we've got ourselves to the stage of having 95.5% of all of our leavers leaving with NCEA Level 2. Does broadband and access to that make a difference? <clears throat> yes, it does. Could we measure it 
Exactly, probably not, because there's too many variables that come into it. Is it a contributing factor that helps? Yes, there's no doubt about that. As our increased activity has gone up, things have improved. Next up will be Network for Learning. Um, we're going to be at the forefront. I was just advised yesterday that our course connection for Network for Learning is now in place, so that's where we're going to start. Um, it's pretty exciting times because that'll again change what we do. I can get rid of PF Sense and I can start to use the Cisco-based firewall and filtering products that are going to come with Network for Learning. It's had other positive influence as well. Wanaka missed out as being a, a bit missed out on being a UFB centre rollout. So instead, Gigatown Wanaka is underway. There's a little development between Chorus, uh, Queenstown Lakes District Council, and uh, the Wanaka Chamber of Commerce, and they're going to put fibre around the town. That'll supplement some of the fibre that's out there already. But this town's pretty excited about it. Um, when I looked last week, I think we were third on the list. So we're trying hard, and everyone's getting involved. Yep, it's all a blur. Life is in the fast lane. The guys who did our school magazine the other day, they just commented to me, oh, I was able to upload that school magazine to the publishers. It only took 290 seconds. That's a huge difference to what it used to be. So we can actually get on and do things now. Um, we like to think that we are on top of it when it appears, and we have a great time. And the best thing is that everybody, including people like Abby, are happy. So it's great. Thank you.